All right, this is a video about bilateral jugular vein entrapment from a whiplash, compressed vagus ganglion, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and gastroparesis. Uh, this is a MRI slice, axial slice. Uh, she was 12 years old. For her 12th birthday, they went to a go-kart track. She got hit from behind by some drunken 20-something. Didn't feel well. Within a matter of a few months, she started getting gastroparesis. Her stomach wouldn't empty anymore. And then it got severe to where they have to feed her with a tube. Uh, she throws everything up. Uh, her gut is basically turned off. Because of that, her electrolytes get off balance. She gets real sick and she's lived in the hospital for the last nine years. She gets out of the hospital a day or two here, about two weeks a year. So for the last nine years, she's been in the hospital uh, a few months ago, her father brought me this MRI. This is the jugular vein on her right, and this is her jugular vein on the left. I saw this and, of course, said, oh my gosh, what's happening with that jugular there? Uh, these are slices all the way through. You can go anywhere through the neck, even in the head, and you can see it. Here's another slice. Uh, this is the jugular vein completely backed up with blood. Uh, I've got some other images that show that the, the blood density right there at the jugular foramen where the afferent ganglion of the vagus is, is as dense as the arch of the aorta. Um, and we'll see that in a little bit. But there's the, the jugular on the le her left. Uh, this is her jugular on her right. And here's another, now here's, of course, it backs all the way up into the brain. Uh, the sinusoidal sinus on one side is backed up. Uh, and actually, you can see some secondary veins are just trying to, uh, by the way, she, she looks like she has uh, varicose veins all up in there just because the blood can't leave the head. Uh, and it, it is entrapped on both sides. All right, so this is what we saw on MRI. Here it is. There's the uh, jugular foramen on the right, completely eroded. Actually, I've got other images to show you how eroded and compressed it is. She's miserable. She looks like she's dying all the time. She is just miserable. Um, this is a 3D image I did of the her MRI. Uh, and you can see, well, this is her, all the blood backed up in there. And again, that's super dense. Let's see here. All right, so that's everything I saw on the MRIs. Uh, called the primary, showed them everything I showed you. Uh, they said it's normal. The radiologist called it normal. I'm like, no, it's not normal. So we had to wait like a week. Finally, they got back. We actually, they didn't get back to us. We called them again. And they're like, no, it's normal. Why do you say it's normal? Well, we called the radiologist, told them what you said. He said, it's absolutely normal. Well, it's not normal. So um, the chief thoracic surgeon at the local hospital here, I showed it to him. He's, he knows it's not normal. Uh, said, okay, we'll get a CT angiogram with venous phase. He gets it all the way down to the chest. He wanted to see all the way down to the heart. He wanted to see, he wanted to see everything. Insurance de denies it. What do you, well, they already called it normal. It took a month of him fighting with the insurance company just to, to, to approve a CT angiogram with venous phase. Finally got that. Got the CT angiogram and here it is. So not only is it bad, it's real bad. It's life-threatening. She's a real sick little girl. Okay, so here is the right jugular, and I'll show you in a minute. We're uh, right behind the clavicle. So, so basically, the, the, the go-kart injury was massive whiplash, forced through the, through the clavicle. Behind the clavicle is the innominate vein, uh, right where the jugular vein meets it, and there's scar tissue, there's adhesions, and it's just choked in there. The blood's not being able to drain on this right side. And insult to injury, the atlas is out of place several degrees and, and choking the jugular on the left up on top. Uh, so, he, oh, and then, so they put a pick line in there to try to save her, you know, keep her alive, which the hospital has been really good at keeping her alive for nine years uh, by keeping her electrolytes because she's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Um, anyway, so here you can see the innominate vein, very narrow compared to this big side on the, on the, on the left side. Uh, 
All right, so anyway, she's in the hospital now, yet still uh, the, the doctor had to do some emergency surgery to remove that pick line. Uh, actually, we'll show you some more images here. All right, so let's go to, well, all right, so here's a view looking down from the top. This is the top of the C2 vertebra. You can't see the front of C2 over here, but you can see a lot of it over here. That's because this atlas bone is rotated towards you and is choking the jugular, pinching it real bad up on top here. We'll get, let's see if I can get a better, I have better images of it. Let's uh, see if this one shows it. All right, so you might think that this is the styloid process, but no, that's the styloid process here. This is the, the jugular vein, internal jugular vein. And, it, and there's the, inverse, the transverse process of atlas. You can see it just turns to nothing. It's pinched, turns into a little wisp. And then there, there's the jugular vein. Hardly any blood getting through there. Obviously, when she gets out of the hospital next, we want to adjust this atlas and open that up. Uh, let's see what kind of view is here. Uh, oh, here's another view. There's that jugular vein. This is on the on the left side, and you can see there's it's, that's where it runs into where there's no hardly any blood just dripping through there. Uh, look at how little that jugular vein is there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Okay, these are the ones that they said were normal. What else we got here? Um, another beautiful shot of that rotated atlas. Again, we keep going back to that. All right, so here's, here's a blow up of uh, behind the clavicle. So this is where the, the force went through the clavicle, uh, scarred up all around the innominate vein here. So this is the big giant jugular that comes down and then it goes into this little tiny, I've got some other angles of it to see how tiny it is there. And oh, and here's here's the size of the other one. So you're comparing the the left innominate vein. Look how big and giant and thick that thing is going through, going right in through here. And then you're seeing how narrow it is there. All right, let's get another view of that. Yep, there's another view of it. Small sclerosis, I mean, uh, narrow. Here's how wide it is on the other side. There's the jugular on the left. There's that big giant jugular on the right coming down. And the injury behind the clavicle. Oh, let's see, can I show this one? Yeah, that's a good shot of it too. 17. I guess we went through those. There's another view. Large, ju large jugular. Totally uh, narrow denominant vein on the right, backing up the blood. And here's the jugular vein on the left. The normal size denominant vein coming through there. Uh, and of course, she's a very sick little girl. Bless her heart. Uh, here... So I'm going to show a surgery of uh, somebody else, same, same kind of injury, right behind the clavicle. What you're about to see is the jugular choked and throbbing. Uh, you'll see the surgeon tell the nurse to inflate the lungs. And when the nurse inflates the lungs till they're full, it opens it up and the, the, blood, the jugular vein is able to drain. Uh, so in this particular case, and it's, I mean, it's a surgery. I don't know if you want to see this. Inflate again and then deflate the one by, by hand. Okay, go ahead, inflate. Good, take the shot. Are you taking a movie? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then deflate completely. Okay, good. I want you to inflate again and then deflate the lung by, by hand. All right, you can watch that again. All right, so as soon as that surgeon did that surgery, he called me, really excited. Uh, first thing he said is, all the normal pulse waves from the heart were restored. Uh, the heart is so dynamic, it has to be able to have, not have any back pressure. It needs to be able to push blood back up this column of, of the jugular to 
so that the valves can close and the heart. So there's these pulse waves that go up through the, the jugular that you weren't able to see. Uh, and of course, actually, interestingly enough, uh, that's another case. It's not even this case. I'm just showing you what, what, it, what kind of, what it looks like when they get the surgery from there. But the heart does better. I mean, anyway. Uh, gosh, what else did I want to show you on this? I guess that's it. Oh, there we go. This is actually a 3D rendering I did of the MRI itself. Can't believe it turned out. I haven't been able to. Anyway. All right. Have a blessed day. Hope that helps somebody.